Practice problem. Naturally occurring silver exists as two isotopes. From the mass of each isotope and the isotopic abundance listed below, calculate the average atomic mass of silver. Okay, so take a moment, look at that this table, okay, and do what we did before to calculate the average atomic mass of silver. Sorry, there is a typo on this thing. So the first silver, the first silver, we want to convert this to a percentage, 51.8% becomes? Okay, so we have 0 0.518 and we're going to multiply it by 106.9. Because we want to find out what percent of all the silvers are of this atomic mass. Okay, and then we're going to try to find pretty much 48.2% uh, of that are make up this. So that makes up 55.3742. Okay. This bottom one, okay, we have uh, 0.482% as a decimal. We're going to multiply it by 108. 0.9, and we get 4898. So what are we going to do next? We're going to add these two together. Okay. We're going to add those two together, and we're going to get 107.8. Six. Six four. Eight six four. So, according to our question, the least number of significant digits are three. Three. So we want the one o oh, seven, but we look at the point eight, and one o oh, seven becomes one one oh, one o oh, eight. eight. What is the atomic mass of silver? I'm guessing one o oh, eight. One o oh, seven point eight. One one o oh, seven. Point eight, right? No, it's just okay. So one hundred seven point eight. But remember, we rounded it off to one hundred eight, right? And according to even when you're making your calculations, right? If you're trying to find the atomic mass subtracted by the atomic number to give you the number of neutrons, you always want to round off to your nearest whole atomic mass, right? So one hundred seven point eight, you'd round off to one hundred eight. So notice how the two match. <laughs> because you have to. <laughs> now, of, if you look at these two, okay, they don't compare to the, the actual atomic mass. Right? We're looking at the isotopes okay, of silver. Okay? Really what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand, well, if I'm going to find the atomic mass and someone is giving me, is telling me that the atomic mass of silver is 106.9. I'm gonna look at my periodic table and I'm gonna say, wait, no, you're lying to me because the atomic mass says it's 107.8. So why is that value not equaling? And we're doing this because we wanna figure out why are we getting these? Because in fact, we've been, we've been taught that the atomic mass is the atomic mass of all, but we've not been pretty much exposed to the fact that whenever we have a compound, they are really made up of the varying different isotopes. And in fact, that the atomic mass that's given in our, in our periodic table is an average when it's comparing all the different isotopes. Okay? So that's the reason why we're making the, the calculation. So that's, that's the reason. To understand, well, here I'm telling you, 106.9 is the atomic mass of your silver. But you're looking at it going, no, you're lying. I did, right? <laughs> but why? Because the different isotopes play a, a very big part of figuring out what that is because that is an average based on the isotopic abundance of each one of the different isotopes.